right now. It is time to find somebody who never has the time to molt. Always spreading those wings and flying. Uh, it is Dr. Judy Workman, uh, the co-author of the Serotonin Power Diet, serotoninpowerdiet.com. Also, Simon loses his tummy, and Dr. Workman's going to fly in here right now. Good morning, Dr. Workman. Good morning, good morning, and it's nice to uh, speak to both, to both of you in the same microclimate, more That's or right. less, <laughs> New England. I don't know. I'd be happier with your, 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 your other microclimate. How, 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 is it, how is it in Boston? Oh, it's, it's fine. You know, it's still uh, and very few signs of new growth. The first cities are out. That's about it. Um, but, you know, the sun is shining, and one can go outside without wearing 17 layers of clothing, so it's, it's not too bad. Well, that's, that's, that's good to hear. So before, before, before we address your uh, very uh, erudite topic of the day, week, um, are there just more and more asinine diets coming out? Well, what is, I think, very disturbing, Jill, is the, the keto, paleo, oh, gosh. Uh, you know, no, 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 no carbohydrate diet. Instead of going away, even though there have been some reports showing that a low carbohydrate, high you know high protein, high fat diet may contribute to a particular kind of heart disease called atrial fibrillation, that came out um, about last week. Uh, it, it's still being promoted, and there was a an article I think it was in the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, over the weekend, showing saying written by a non scientist saying. Oh, all these celebrities are following this diet, and they seem to be losing weight, and I tried it, and I lost weight, so it's a good diet. I mean, really, a very carefully researched article. So uh, it, it is, it, I think it is very disturbing, and, um, and I have to say that I, I had a conversation with somebody who was consulting with me, an Italian uh, uh, executive who got a hold of me, I don't know, through very complicated ways, but, you know, I've been doing telephone consultations with him, and he said to me, uh, he gained weight on antidepressants, and he said he went to his physician. The physician said, go on a, you know, a high-protein, low-carbohydrate diet, which is what the nutritionist said, and he did that, and he actually became much worse. Uh, yeah, because you're hungry. Mood. Your yeah, body well, gets and, hungry. And his, mood, his mood became much worse. And, and he said, he explained to the doctor that, well, no, no, he needed to eat carbohydrates in order to make serotonin, because that's what his antidepressants were working on. The doctor said, huh? Basically, yeah, right. the Italian equivalent of uh huh, and <laughs> and had no idea about this. Oh, you should really stop eating carbohydrates. So, I think it's becoming global, and I think the effect is people are not going to be losing weight permanently unless they stay on this this kind of diet, and it's not good for you. And I think people's moods are going to get worse as a result. Uh, but I guess you know it's not as bad as global warming. But <laughs> but maybe in terms of mood, we have global worsening. Yeah, but, but 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 I think that the the thing that I find frustrating in the in, in in all of it is, in the same way. Look, I'm not the queen of vaccines, but in the same way, from a public health standpoint, I find the measles outbreaks really irritating. Right. Which is, how right. can how how can you, you know, you spend X number of years eradicating something. And then a bunch of misinformation suddenly becomes the gold standard. And the next thing you know, all that hard work has pretty much come to naught. Oh, well, yes. I mean, and God forbid there should be something like a polio outbreak. Yeah, God forbid. Uh, because, but th yeah, this yeah, because, seems... Because, because we're just sitting on, on uh, that kind of, of, of a catastrophe. It, it, it is, uh, you know, it, it, is, it is impossible, to really, to, at this point, to sort of put the information back into a scientific box because people are able to say whatever they want and and it, if you say no that's not true well i believe it's so and so therefore it is right. true um, I mean, the only thing about this the, the, the diets is that when they don't work because they won't for most people because most people will have cravings for carbohydrates and also they need the vegetables and fruits and grains and fiber that you know a, a mediterranean type diet will provide they'll just stop it i mean it's, it's only the you know, the diehards, you know, the, the people who say, well, I'll never have a, a, a morsel of carbohydrate touch my lips again. You know, they'll stay on it. Um, just the way, you know, somebody who is trying to be abstinent from alcohol, I don't mean to be negative about it, but they feel, these keto people feel that one drop of carbohydrate is going to wreck their bodies. And so they'll stay abstinent. Um, until they have so, until know, they've developed some sort of um, ailment that will force them off. Yeah, and, and, you know, as long as you don't tell me what to eat, 
just because you like that diet. That's fine. It's just when they get on the air. When this thing came out about atrial fibrillation, um, people said, no, no, that's not true. I don't believe it. Well, you don't believe it? Fine. Some people, you know, we talked before, believe that the earth is flat. That's fine, but just don't tell other people who have their you know, medical uh, advice based on, on science, you know, to ignore this kind of information. And by the way, so let me just go back to this topic very quickly because it is something that I really was sort of shocked to find out, and I think um, other people should know about it. Yep. I had a conversation with a friend who was telling me about his mother who had a, a, a fairly extensive operation, but she was in very good shape mentally before she went into the surgery. And as a result of the anesthesia, it turns out, she developed cognitive deficits and, and developed um, sort of a mania that lasted really for about almost a year. And, and, and he and the family were absolutely unprepared for the mood changes and the cognitive changes. I mean, they knew that there are some you know, really, uh, you know, disruption, mental disruptions from people who are in the hospital, especially you know, intensive care because of the constant lights and the noise and the pain and, you know, the stress of being there. But what he had not realized is that these, ter- these changes can be long-term. So I started to look into this, and... It was an excellent Scientific American article that was published about three, four years ago saying, yeah, this is the case. Do you have any idea when you have anesthesia? And it can even be the kind, getting the kind of sedative that puts you under when you're getting sort of regional anesthesia, like for a hip replacement, but they give you a sedative to put you under immediately. And sometimes they give you more than you really may need so that you sort of don't wake up and say, Dr. Why, you, what are you doing What are you here? doing? Um, it really can have very, very long effects. And I think that you, you, you can't deny yourself having, an op- having surgery when you need it. I mean, and, and sometimes electric sur- elective surgery, like having your hip replaced, even though you don't have to have it, is really important for the quality of your life. But people should be forewarned that they may suffer the consequences of the anesthesia, and the older you get, the more likely that something can happen and, this, and there was a study that was mentioned in the Scientific American that I went and looked at in which people who were given, who had, were given anesthesia were monitored for up to a year after they had the anesthesia uh, and for cognitive changes, and for some of them they lasted as long as six months or a year, memory loss, executive function loss, um, your sort of inability to, to learn things. These, result, these effects lasted for some people a year after their anesthesia, after their surgery. Now, I have and a question. used to be thought, I'm oh, sorry, go on. No, what I was going to say is you, you really didn't know this? Not as, I didn't think it was going to be as, I don't know. I did not realize that the results could last as long as they did. Okay. Uh, I just, yeah, uh, you know, you know, this is one you, of those. Maybe, you had the, maybe you've had the experience. No, it, well, kind of. You, you, but it, it, it came from uh, a, 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 a predecessor. It, it, it came from. The realization that it, it, this could happen came from an old uh, 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 golden retriever, be, the beloved uh, Zarino. So this was uh, decades ago when she was uh, a young, a young bucklet, and uh, she right. was spayed. And you know, it was just so obvious that while the operation was a success, it took time for the anesthesia to. Uh, you could you could smell it. You could just smell it on it. It just it just took much longer, and no one said anything about it. And we again, we know I'm weird, but from that moment on, I have always factored in the much longer side effects. And I've actually been staggered that no one kind of mentions it, just as a rule. That's odd. You know, they were having trouble with their phone service. Well, they're not there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's it for Judy (laughs) Werbin. Food for mood. Okay. You can find Judy, of course, uh, on our on-demand page, robinhoodradio.com. Click on on-demand. Click on food for mood.